The following is a presentation of TFNN. Good morning, markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. I hope everyone had a great Easter weekend out there, long weekend in the markets. We got the jobs number Friday. Interesting action so far this morning. We're zooming in on a 15-minute basis. Futures open as the market gets those jobs on Friday. 236,000 jobs added for the month of March. Decent numbers. Unemployment rate, 3.5%. Not sure how you squash inflation with an unemployment rate that continues to go down unemployment market nonetheless likes the number trades up a bit you see the volatility on that 830 Friday number and it looks like everybody was just eating some good uh, Easter Sunday ham maybe enjoying Easter enjoying Passover and they waited until about 715 this morning and then the market sells off we got markets right across the board right now S&P's we're approaching 4100 you're negative by 25 points right now that's about six tenths percent in the red Nasdaq 100 you're off by about nine tenths inching towards 13,000 we were up above 13,150 you just trade down 110 points you're almost off a full percent from where you were just at 6 30 a.m. this morning when most of us woke up Dow off 127 points that's about a third of percent in the red this morning and you got the Russell off by six tenths percent Bitcoin Holding up relatively well. I'm just going to record that one, man. Bitcoin, just staggering how well it's been holding up. Up $370 right now, 28415 You got crude, a little bit of volatility, but crude right now, negative by $0.33 cents right now, eighty thirty eight. Quite the week last week, of course, for crude. You got the OPEC Plus cut a week ago. Since then, crude, pretty tight volatility in terms of a pretty tight trading range from 80 to about $81. we are almost right in the middle of that range. Gold contract. Giving back some of the gains of last week. Gold up to 2050 almost last week. This morning, you see the drop off down $23 on the session. 2003, just hanging on to that 2000 price point in the price of gold. Yeah. Let me jump around. What is? It's not on my list. Yeah. We got to talk about natural gas, folks. So I was getting to because they're talking about natural gas in the den, rightfully so. Check out the acceleration going on in natural gas, man. The whole market waking up this morning at about 7.45 a.m. Natural gas just spikes from 204 to 216. You're up 7% in natural gas. Remarkable. Silver, back to the metals. Down about 15 pennies as gold is trading lower. Silver still at about $25. You jump to notes and bonds. You see the action on Friday. You see the action today. So on the jobs number, you get a little bit of lower price, higher yield. We're talking about a 10-year right now, approaching 3.4%, 3.385. Uh, as we have lower price, higher yield coming back after that number, we put the 10-year on a daily just for some context here. And you can see, still well off the lows that we had when the Silicon Valley banking crisis began, um, but pulling back a bit on the 10-year right now, the 30-year. Up four ticks, actually, 133.07. We jump over to the volatility index. A little bit of negative action in the market on the VIX. You get, oh, come on. Come on. There we go. 1988. You could call that elevated, but still pretty, uh, pretty low volatility premium in this market considering what we've been dealing with and considering the volatility that we have potentially coming down the line. We kick off earnings season, man. It is... What day? April 10th. April 10th. Earnings season coming at you. We get a lot of the big banks on Friday to kick things off. And let's jump through a couple of them. You jump over to the Analyze tab. You jump over to the Earnings tab on the Thinkorswim platform. So we got JP Morgan. They'll be out with their numbers on Friday. Let's see who else we get. We get Citi out with their numbers as well. Wells Fargo out with their numbers as well on Friday. So we got J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citi. Think Bank of America is next week. Bank of America is next week. We also got Goldman and Morgan Stanley next week on the 18th. Okay, what is that, Tuesday and Wednesday, 18th? Yes, yeah, so you got Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley on the 18th. Uh, excuse me, you have Goldman Sachs and Bank of America on the 18th. 
and we get Morgan Stanley on the 19th. Now, what we do get, which will be interesting, is you get First Republic. They'll be out with their numbers. Hmm. Thought that was Thursday. For some reason, they got them up on the 24th. Maybe somebody can help me out. Pretty sure that was. But nonetheless, you jump back to this chart. And yeah, they're not out of the woods, folks. First Republic, man. This thing chopping around from 140 down to 14. That's 10% of the value this thing was trading at about two months ago, which you could calculate as almost a 90% probability that the thing's going to go BK from where it was prior. I just don't understand in the banks, man, how any single entity puts money in a bank over $250,000. Folks, if you're a trader, if you're an investor, you want to look at things from a risk-reward perspective, our man Larry Pesavento says it all the time, it's not what you can make, it's what you can lose. They both are an integral part of the risk-reward scenario, right? Well, if you're putting more than $250,000 in a bank, I know I'm like speaking like ABCs of math and, and investments, as in, of course, we all know this stuff, but what is going on that people still have that much money in many of these banks? It's going to take a while, but there's going to be massive pressure across the board on deposits. You're going to see CD rates continue to face pressure to the upside as banks need capital and they're going to have to pay for it. Okay, I've talked about it on my pro show before. We take a look at the 10-year. The 10-year treasury right now is at about 3.39%. Call it even 3.4. We'll round up, okay? 10 years at 3.4. Folks, you go out to a two-year, five-year CD, you're, you're pushing 4.6, 4.8, 4 4.9%, depending on where you're going, depending on a ladder, depending on what you want to do. Rates high, banks facing pressure. People taking out deposits at the same time as they have problems on their balance sheets, at the same time that they're going to have to pay more money for those deposits. At a minimum, credit is tightening up, and there's going to be some level of scale in terms of how much that tightening credit influences banks, lending, capital requirements. And then on top of that, you have just the fact that even if they're fine, okay, even if they're not going BK, Banks are going to have some real tough times on earnings, man, because their balance sheets are facing woes. The Fed has said they're going to stay higher for longer, even if maybe they got one more hike down the line. OK, that seems to be one of the stories out there. Maybe they hike one more time and then maybe that puts enough pressure on the market to pause. We'll talk about that, OK, in the next segment, because I'm going to go over the Fed schedule and we have a Fed meeting coming up in less than a month. That one will be interesting, but boy, it's going to be really interesting when you go one more month out because we're going to get two months of data before that next meeting, and it's going to be data dependent. And this jobs number, folks, okay? Job mark, you, you can almost pick your headline, which is interesting. And this is how it's always been, okay, in terms of there's something for everybody in every data point because there's so many pockets of the economy that either are, whether you look at this number, okay? Non-farm payrolls rise 236,000 in March in line with forecast. Participation rate up to a three-year high, helping the labor supply. You look at that number, folks, it's the lowest number in basically a couple years, okay? But the unemployment rate keeps going down. That's not how it works, man. We are at 3.5% unemployment. You had an upwardly revised 326,000 job number in February. Unemployment rate at 3.5% there were signs of cooling. Folks, we're at 3.5%. There are signs of cooling, but boy, they are minuscule signs. We got a lot to talk about on Monday, folks. Don't go away, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P right now, negative by 23. NASDAQ 100, negative by 113. Dow off 108. Russell off by 7. We're kicking off earnings, man. A little bit of negative action, but all things considered, folks, look where we are in this market, right? You're talking about a lofty level of 4108 right now. And as I mentioned, okay, getting back into that jobs number real briefly, they talk about signs of cooling, annual rages, Annual wages rising at the slowest pace since June of 2021. I think that number was about 4 point something percent, 4.6 maybe percent. But overall, the March data following strong readings in the prior two months paint a picture of a resilient labor demand that is particularly remarkable as other parts of the economy slow. Listen, the Fed has talked about, man, you can't have wages like this and we're going to tame inflation. It just doesn't happen. Because wages are paid by companies. Companies have to recoup the wages. And now I'm adding, you know, but it just makes sense. Round and round you go, okay? If you got people making more money, you got companies incurring greater costs, you got companies incurring greater costs, what are they going to do? They're going to charge more money for their products to recoup the costs, justifiably so. Payrolls have jumped by more than 1 million since the start of the year. That's only for three months, folks. <laughs> Excuse me. While the data are a bit mixed, the labor market is strong enough and inflation still elevated and sticky to lead to the Fed to raise rates another 25 basis points in May. That's the chief economist at Nationwide Life Insurance. One person out there, one person's opinion uh, could be the last for the tightening cycle, followed by a long pause. Now, that's an interesting kicker, right? Because that's where the debate is really starting to rage. Now, what we have is we have a Fed meeting. Yeah, remarkable. Um, let me pull this up, how quickly they come. Okay. We have a Fed meeting less than a month from right now, May 2nd and 3rd. Okay. Yeah, look at that. What are we talking about? One, two, time flies, man. Three weeks from tomorrow, three weeks from this Wednesday, we got a Fed decision. Okay. Now, We've gotten the jobs number for March already. We're going to get some economic number of numbers as they continue, of course. We'll get CPI, of course, for March. But what's so interesting here is, okay, this meeting coming up for May, May 2nd and 3rd, okay? But then you go to the next meeting, and you're talking about all the way to June 13th and 14th, okay? Now, what's interesting there is you're not going to have, when you have the May meeting, 
May 2nd and 3rd, you're not going to have the April jobs number. That's the last jobs number we got before the next Fed meeting, okay? We're not getting any more non-farm payroll numbers. That's one of the most important data points out there right now. So that data is out. Next Fed meeting coming up. We're not getting any more jobs data. But we get two months of jobs data between the May meeting and the June meeting. Because what do we get? We're going to get April and May data coming into that June meeting. It's a lot of data, man. So if anybody tells you they know what's going on by June, I'd give them some pause because we just got so much data coming down the line over that time. And when you look at an unemployment rate at 3.5%, folks, I don't envision they have the ability to be cutting anytime soon. We've talked to our man, Kevin Hanks. We talk to him every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Maybe an event takes place, okay? Maybe the banks have a real issue. We're going to get into some of the commercial. I mean, commercial, they've been talking about it a ton everywhere. They're talking about it in the den, rightfully so. Commercial real estate could be something that is a constant pressure on the banks, on the market, on the economy for a period of years right now. And we're going to we're gonna get into that one. And you know what? Let's try and find the articles. Let's get into it because I got a few of them, man. Let me see if I pull out Bloomberg. Check out Bloomberg, okay, this morning. They're talking about it a lot, but I've been thinking about it a lot. And bigger picture, okay, bigger picture, what could really weigh on this economy is commercial real estate, man. Because you better believe the world has changed, folks. No matter what you feel about the economy, slowdowns, okay, and there's probably going to be a slowdown, okay. The fact that the world has changed forever and people are working from home at a much greater rate than ever envisioned three years ago, and I can't believe we're talking about three years ago was when COVID was, three years, talking to my dad, flew by. I mean, it just changed everyone's time perception over the last three years because our lives stopped. You know, everything stopped. School stopped, activities stopped, uh, going, to, going to work stopped, you worked from home, and it created just a two to three year period of time that just time flew. So three years ago, but the world has changed. Office space is no longer necessary like it was. Now, if you wanna talk about your marquee properties, right? You wanna talk about your marquee New York properties, you wanna talk about your marquee properties wherever they are, where you have Fortune 500 companies that need a um, global headquarters, right? They need somewhere where their C-suite is. They need a beautiful audit, um, entrance way, right? With maybe some whatever it is, right? Class A office space, I imagine they're gonna be okay because it makes sense. But boy, if you're in the middle of the pack or the lower end of the pack, what's the point of bringing people into an office building that has no purpose whatsoever besides cubicles, which a lot of office buildings have, okay? And they had a great use when people had to come to the office, but that world has changed, man. It's probably a lot more cost efficient when people are in that capacity to put a lot of them at home. Now that's an entirely different debate but it has changed, to put it lightly, okay? Now, there are some steep numbers here in terms of what they're talking about, in terms of the real estate here. Let me get the one that we're talking about for real estate, okay? What commercial real estate stress means for banks and bond funds, where the cracks are showing up in the market? Now, there's a couple different ones here. A $1.5 trillion wall of debt is looming for US commercial properties. Yeah, refinancing risks front and center. Okay, number one, and check this out, office retail property values, valuations could fall as much as 40%. And I have to find the ETFs they're talking about, and maybe somebody in the den has it, because I was listening to, I think it was Barry Ritholtz this weekend, podcast, um, one of the, I was listening to Bloomberg on this weekend, one great program that we I, I can't remember, but it was a great program. And what they were talking about is they were talking about private equity is private, okay? So you don't know really what's going on in private equity, and that could be another factor in here, let alone the amount of commercial real estate loans that are on the bank's balance sheets, okay, which are gonna put pressure on them. But what, what, the, what they were saying was, if you look at some of the private equity ETFs, or I, I gotta pull it up because it was a staggering statistic. Private equity, or versus the public REITs, public REITs where you're traded down 40 to 50%, private equity down like five, 6% because nothing's been marked, okay? So it's a massive, massive difference when you go across the board here. And I read on one of these that something like a quarter 
of loans are coming up in the next year or something like that. There's almost so much data out there, folks, on this one. 1.5 trillion of U.S. commercial real estate debt comes to for repayment before the end of 2025. What's gonna happen is the cap rates on all of these properties are gonna be insanely different from where they were. Investment bank estimates, office and retail property valuations could fall as much as 40% from peak to trough. That shouldn't be surprising, folks, at all, okay? Number one, you have much lower rates in terms of occupancy. And then in the same essence, you have less people paying your paying to rent that space. And at the same time, it's gonna cost you more to refinance it. And in, in some cases, all their equity is gonna be wiped out and they're gonna to wanna to hand it back to the bank and they're not gonna to wanna to hand it back to the bank. The bank's not gonna to wanna to take it. So keep, and in light of a banking crisis already existing, folks, how's that going to play out when we got unemployment rate at 3.5% and the Fed's in a tough spot? We're going to get to see. Stay tuned for the opening bell. We'll be right back, Building folks. wealth trading in the stock market seems <coughs> impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You look at an S&P opening basically right near the lows of last week. Thursday and Friday, you make it down to about 4,100. You close out the week where you inch towards 4,140 on that jobs number. And right now, you're trading at 4,107. Markets in negative territory. S&P's off six tenths. NASDAQ 100 off almost a full percent right now. You get the Dow off about 100 points. That's almost, uh, what, three tenths percent right now. And the Russell 
catches a little bit of a bid actually on the open with the Russell down about three tenths percent. Let's check out some of those banks as we come into earnings on Friday. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one, man. You know, what, what, what's the impetus to have a huge acceleration on banks when we're dealing with all the woes that I'm talking about, man? You know, CD rates, I'm going to pull up CD rates in a moment. We'll pull them up. These banks are going to have to be paying up big time, man. JP Morgan down eight tenths percent. Citi down only two tenths percent right now. Uh, what else did I say? Wells Fargo, I think, out on Friday, down about six tenths percent right now. And take a look at these. These are CD rates as of this morning, folks, okay? You want some free money in terms of guaranteed money? Don't put $250,000 in, in any bank. You know, don't put more than that. But keep your numbers at an insured amount. And look at the numbers you're talking about here. You can get a two-year ladder at 4.84. You can get a five-year ladder at 4.61. You just want a five-year. You're talking about 4.4% right now. But you ladder it, you got 4.6. You want a two-year non-callable CD, 4.7%. Percent, you put a hundred grand in there, man. You're making almost ten thousand dollars in two years, risk free. Now, folks, there's nothing to say the market's going to go down, but make sure you are positioned correctly for where you're comfortable with risk reward. Because if you're not comfortable with risk, or you don't have the time in retirement to to ride out a potential downturn from here. And boy, a risk-free rate of 4.84% on a two-year ladder or a risk-free rate of 4.61 on a five-year, that's pretty attractive, man. And this is going to be a headwind for the market as we continue. And yeah, getting back to that article I was talking about in terms of the end, okay, this is talking about here. We'll slide back up. This is a different one, jumping around. The end may be in sight for global rate hike cycle as the Fed nears peak, okay? But one of the other ones I wanted to look at, because they tie in, Bond market is overplaying the risk of a deep recession, okay? And what they're talking about here is that each day that there isn't a banking crisis is another day indicating that the current pricing does not make sense, but it's going to take a while. Again, that's one person, that's a CIO, chief investment officer for some fund company, okay? They worked for Bridgewater for 13 years, got a lot of respect for Bridgewater, Mr. Dalio, what he did there. Um, and as usual, the debate is not settled. Now, what's interesting here is you go back to the other article I was looking at. Okay, you scroll down here in terms of what they're talking about for rates. Okay, the Federal Reserve, the current Fed funds rate, the upper boundary is 5%. Bloomberg Economics thinks that they're going to end the year at 5.25. What is that? That's one more hike and a pause. Excuse me, that seems pretty re reasonable. And then they're looking for potentially 4.25, as in you get a four cuts sometime over the next year. Again, pretty reasonable, okay, but well off what the market is pricing in right now. Yeah, well off in terms of what they're pricing in right now. What Bloomberg Economics says, we expect the Fed to hike by another 25 basis points at its May. The upper boundary is going to reach 5.25. And then you got, with the recent production, cuts by OPEC and a still tight U.S. labor market. Inflation will likely remain in the vicinity of 4% in 2023 and keep the Fed from rate cuts as markets currently foresee. Yeah. I mean, you're telling me we're going to get a three-handle in inflation over the next eight months? I don't see it. We see the Fed holding rates at the peak level for the duration of this year and even as a mild recession is likely to develop in late 2023. They go over the other banks as well, okay? Keep in mind, folks, that the unemployment rate's at 3.5% and we have inflation raging. Now, the wage numbers that just came out of the jobs number was something like 4.6%, I think. Maybe if somebody in the den has exactly what it rose, I think it was 4.6% wages went up on a yearly basis. That's showing signs of easing, okay? But an ADP has different numbers out there and ADP is not the number that non-farm payrolls is in terms of how representative it is of the entire economy within the country. But ADP, folks, for the last year, shows 7% wage increases if you're in the same job and 14% if you change jobs. Very difficult to imagine the Fed going on a cutting cycle with those numbers, with unemployment at 3.5% and inflation still pretty lofty, to put it lightly. Now, I keep saying it because, of course, an event could happen. You know, they push it up higher. We have commercial real estate really puts the clamp on things. Things slow down much quicker than we expect. They can turn on a dime. But that's the reason why they're not going to get ahead of inflation and start cutting because they can turn on a dime. You don't want to be late. They relate to the inflation party, which is why we're raging right now. 
Okay, so they don't want to be late on the other side of that. But keep in mind that they were late to the inflation party because they demanded to see that that was not transitive, right? Everybody else said it wasn't transitive. Chairman Powell was one of the last to expire that term. It's going to be the same way on the other side, okay? It is. He's not going to wait for inflation to rage before hiking and then all of a sudden start cutting before inflation is clearly out of the picture. He's going to be data dependent and he was slow on one side. And the only way you can rationalize that, I mean, put yourself in his head. We're all human beings, folks. He is a human being, okay? He thinks about his legacy. The only way he can really defend the decisions that got us here is to say, I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side, okay? I waited too long because I demanded to see the data that we were deep in inflation and it wasn't going to be transitory. And I feel like he's going to do the same thing on the other side that he's going to say, hold on a second, man. I need to see some real data that we're going back to 2% before we start cutting. And please give me a call, folks, 877-927-6648, because what is it going to take to show that we're on the way back to 2%? Boy, it is going to take some numbers, man, and we're not even close to where we need to be just yet. My opinion, okay, but we're all just dealing with opinions, but we'll go from there. Now, let's jump to the biggest dog out there, Apple, okay? We jump over to Apple shares this morning. As this market deteriorates, here we go. Apple shares, this could be the one that does it, folks. You start getting a company like Apple trading off two plus percent on a day, this thing has been carrying the market, man, carrying it, okay? And you're off 2%, and rightfully so. Apple's 40% plunge in PC shipments is the steepest among major competitors. It's a big number, but even among computer makers, it's the biggest, okay? So we know PC shipments are in trouble because everybody bought a computer that needed one over the last three years, right? Generalizing, but you get the point. But look at the numbers we're talking about here. Oh, Apple's down 40%. That's PC shipments down in the first quarter for all major brands, HP, they're almost down half of that, 24%. Dell, 30%. 30%. Overall, 29%. Apple, down 40.5%, man. 40.5% is the number for Apple. And you take a look at this equity as you're now down 2.3%. And folks, you're down almost $4. That's $64 billion in market cap that just got wiped out on Apple shares. You want to talk about things moving quickly, man? Yeah, the NASDAQ 100 is off 1.35%, just like that. Dow, off 4 tenths percent. And you take a look at Apple. I talked about it last week, man. Apple shares basically just gave back nothing, as in they were trading at December prices of 2021. That's not what Max Payne looks like, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be back in three minutes. Lots more to talk about, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P down 25, NASDAQ 100 down 160 points. That's 1.3%. They're talking about it in the den, man. You can't help but talk about it, right? You got Apple down dramatically on their numbers. You got Tesla down as well. They got their own issues with Tesla shares off. Oh, there you go for Elon, 4.20% for Tesla shares as I pull it up. You got Amazon shares off 1.8%. You got Microsoft shares off 1.7%, man. These companies have held up extremely well, folks. They've been carrying this market, and if they turn, watch out. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to bring it up because it's a great point, Jimmy, and I ask it as a real question to try and understand what you think because, you know, politics comes into everything, okay? So let's say that Chairman Powell was a little bit worried about keeping his position, which is the point that he makes in the den, and he held off on some of those hikes initially. That would mean that Chairman Powell is a little bit self-serving for his own interests versus what he thought would be the correct move to make, right? You'd go for that assumption, which, listen, man, politics, so many people are only interested in their own power in politics, man. They're not doing even the best thing for their constituents because the only thing they can do is what will keep them in power to that same type of degree, okay? So if that's the case... Where my head goes, all right, Jimmy, because this is just opinions, man. We're playing it out, right? You're just kind of like playing things out, where they could be, where they go. I would say if that's the case, man, if I was in Chairman Powell's position, I would be petrified that my legacy would be the guy who let inflation rage and then didn't have the conviction to keep the cuts in place. You know, and that's then I agree, man. You're, I suspect they go much higher for much longer than anyone expects. Then we're on the same page, man. Totally. And maybe that's the case. And maybe they just keep it for longer, which I think might be the case. And that would be, a, you know, boy, you stay at five, five and a quarter for a couple of years. What's going to happen to the banks, man? What's going to happen to CD rates? What's going to happen to commercial loans? Right. Um, yeah. And he's expressed admiration for Volcker Duffy. But but words are words, man. And I don't think that. Um, he's come with the same amount of zest that maybe some may have. And so, of course, in his position, I would say you have to express admiration for Volcker because he's the Fed chairman that's getting crushed by inflation and Volcker's the guy who crushed it. So you better be impressed by the last guy that did what you should do. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, folks, because I don't see – I mean, let's put it this way, right? Risk reward. You look at things risk reward. What is the risk to Chairman Powell if he keeps rates where they are or goes a little bit higher. Well, the risk is you hurt the economy. That's it. That's the risk, right? They have two mandates, price stability and full employment. Well, we're at 3.5% unemployment, folks, and price stability is a joke right now. These are things Chairman Powell is thinking about, okay? Um, yes, he does not. And I agree, man. It's just, you know, and I, our man Jimmy, get in the den, folks. We got so many great minds in the den. It's going 24 hours a day this time. I love it. I open it up in the morning. The moment I wake up at 6 o'clock, the tigers and tigresses are already in there chatting. And yeah, there is so much more risk for being the guy who let inflation rage and ruined a generation of retiree savings, okay, 
Or what do you do? You keep it higher for another year or two. You make sure there's no massive event, which they've already done. OK, you get inflation under control and your legacy is that, yeah, you let it get out of control. But covid was a, a, a one off event and he held his he held his feet. You know, he held his position and got it under control. I just it's an easy risk reward scenario, man, until this market breaks. And folks, when you got the biggest company in the world, OK, trading at where it was basically at a. a almost a, a remarkable high. I mean, last week, folks, we were at December prices of 2021. For some context here, okay, Apple traded from 2008 of $2 and change up to 182, and last week we were trading at 166, the same price it was in, in December. Yeah, what did we trade to? We traded to 166.84 last week, and December, it was trading at 157.80, okay? That's not a dramatic give back. Now, it's had quite an acceleration to start off the year, and this is what I talk about, man. Apple this year traded from 124 to 164. You traded up 33% is where you were at, man. Be careful in this market, folks, okay, as we kick things off. And I was thinking maybe that we kick things off this week and we have the banks trading a little bit lower. But that's not even what's happening right now. And that might even be scarier because tech companies have been holding this thing up and we're seeing them all get crushed today. And we're seeing them get crushed on real numbers, man, because that's a real number, okay? Not only do you have Apple slowing down, you have Apple slowing down much more dramatically than its competitors. What's up with that, right? Yeah, it was only down 8%, 0.8% in the pre-market. They bought to update that because now it's down 2.4%, man. Yeah, slowdown in consumer spending of the past year led to double-digit declines in smartphone ship shipments, an accumulating glut among the world's foremost memory chip suppliers. Yeah, it's gonna it's it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out, man. And they're saying maybe if you look forward to 2024, you might see a rebound. I don't know, man. You know, if rates stay higher, and you got mortgage rates are up, rents rents are still catching up, folks. Okay, because people are still redoing their lease a year or two later. That's gonna take two, three, four, five years to play out. Right, you got car loans that are pushing six to seven percent. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about cars in the next one because that's an interesting one as well, in terms of the boom and bust cycle and how we might go into some tough profits for some of those car makers out there. There's a great article I think it was from the Journal last week I was reading, and I'm going to try and find it during this break because I was talking to my dad about this weekend and what they were talking about is is that the car companies have said, listen. We're not going to start just producing cars again when we can, because we found that you produce a small amount of cars, you make a lot of money, you deliver it to the shareholders, and that's what the market likes, and that's what we're going to do. But you know where that becomes a problem? The employees, because they are equipped to make more cars than they're making right now. And a lot of those car companies have unions, and those unions are going to make it very difficult to scale back all those employees, to scale back their capital, and all that stuff. So what's probably going to happen is, no matter what they say, they're going to ramp it up, make the cars. It's going to be boom and bust. It might be the new oil industry, the car companies, as they go around downtown. Uh, there's just so much going across in that market, across the board. All right, you know what we're going to talk about now? We're going to talk a little, a little hockey, man. With all the sports going on this weekend, how about Rom in the Masters yesterday? Tiger making the cut. Um, some big-time Rain, weather in the Masters. Uh, Ron was a great champion, man. And it was pretty cool to see. Not a fan of Liv and the Saudis, man. But it did ramp up the competition when you got the Liv guys and the PGA guys combining at the majors. And the Liv guys finished 2, 3, and 4, man. So Rom saved the day for the PGA because could you imagine if the story would have been Liv takes 1, 2, 3 at the Masters? Um, Rom, great champion, man. And he just played outstanding, folks. If you didn't see the end of the Masters, he had a four-shot lead with about four to play. Something like that. He had a pretty good hand on it. Um, Brooks Kepka played amazing for the first two or three days. Just really struggled yesterday and lost it, unfortunately. But Rom just... just absolute steel confidence man where he was just crushing drives with four holes to play no layups at all that's how you close man you know it was amazing to watch but when we take a break folks we're going to talk a little bit of frozen four because quinnipiac they are the national champions and they have barely had a d1 hockey program for 20 years they won it in overtime 
Um, they beat the juggernaut Minnesota team out there. And I'm a hockey fan, so we're going to talk a little bit of hockey, and we'll finish up with the market. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF nn.com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Boy, it might be an interesting day, man. We're coming up for earnings season. We have the NASDAQ 100 off 1.5% right now. you got Apple shares off 2.6%. You just dropped five bucks on Apple from where you were trading on Thursday. And $5, folks, on Apple is $88.0 billion in market cap. This company just lost. Market might be a little bit scared of what's going on, man. If you start seeing these tech companies take a hit, we jump over to Tesla. Tesla cut their prices yet again over the weekend, down 4%. Now, I'm going to jump to that article, which I found. It was. Didn't really talk about it last week because it was on Thursday at noon, right? Did my show Thursday morning. We're off Friday. After a boom, an auto profit bust looms. Now, a couple of things as we jump through this. First of all, not many people would realize that we're still not even back to where we were pre-pandemic. Okay, this talks about the New York Auto Show that's going on. Uh, last April when you're there, they had a ton of new vehicles. But guess what? You weren't going to be able to buy them because there was no um, inventory whatsoever. This year, a little bit of a different story. There'll be some inventory potentially where you can get some of the cars you're looking at, but we're not even back to where we were. Look at those numbers, okay? You crashed down to 2008 levels. We're back to here. 
Now, what they talk about here, though, is that executives tirelessly make the case that they'll keep inventories in check. But guess what they say? The opposite seems much more likely. Okay, now this is just a take, man. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. Detroit's already plowing its unprecedented pandemic cash flows into brand new EV factories. When they're up and running, the price wars could look fierce even by historic standards. They're making new factories for EV vehicles at the same time they still have the other factories. Okay, they talk about oil is used to boom and bust, and that might be the, play, the case playing out here. Because what's got to happen, folks? They got to deal with their employees. They got to deal with the unions, et cetera. And that's going to be a problem as they go forward. Pretty startling, though. Not many people would have realized that we're not even close to back to where we were pre pandemic with new vehicles, let alone things coming back a little bit online. And to get back to Quinnipiac, folks, uh, if you haven't seen some of the headlines, check it out. They had a goal within 10 seconds of overtime to close it out against the Minnesota Gophers. And check it out. This coach for them, he's been there for 29 years, showed up when it was just a D2 program. Pretty cool, folks. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. Live programming all day, folks. Have a great Monday. We'll talk to you tomorrow, folks.